people ended up in the US, Canada, Australia, and South America. If you are from Bejala, the favorite place for Bejala people would be South America. People from Bethlehem would be in Australia or all over the place. And the, why, the, why do people immigrate? You know, you're, you're facing it in, uh, an issue in Holland. You have a lot of immigrants who come to Holland from Africa and from the Muslim countries and around the globe. Why do they come to Holland? Because economically you're doing much better. It's more stable. You have a government in place. Nobody threatening your life, you know, as, as you live in there. There's no major wars that is hitting there. And you don't have the wall. I mean, you've, all of you have seen the wall. It's, it's not an easy thing to live with. You know, because I am from Jerusalem, or Yaqubin is from Jerusalem, we could move in and out. Uh, I can't say fully easily, but almost daily. I'm inside here. I come at 8, I leave at 4, sometimes I come twice a day, sometimes I have to go back and, and attend to my kids or do something with my family and come back to my work. But if you are from Bethlehem, if you were born here, you're not allowed to go outside this area. So you're basically locked within a small proximity of area that you cannot move. If, for example, on Sunday morning or Sunday after church, I want to take my kids uh, you know, out for somewhere else. You know, The longest distance I could go for is 5 kilometers. You know, to take them anywhere, if there's any place to take them to. You know, you could look around, there's no much of parks, there's no much of greens, there's no much of fun, you know, where the kids could go to. And one of the main things is because of uh, the turmoil and the occupation and the struggle and the violence and all of this that has been happening. People were not able to develop people in their social life or their life at all. And uh, of course now we see some changes along this road as, as hopefully there'll be a continuous peaceful more era or peace would come to this area probably people would do better but till I would say you know just imagine in, in the year 2004 and 2005 unemployment in this area was at 70 percent 70 seven zero you know now it is 30 to 35 percent still bad but not as bad as before now there's tourists I mean before there were not as many groups that tourists that could come in here Today, there's thousands and thousands of tourists that come into this year. And by the way, I want to thank you really for coming along and dropping by here. Because you know how many tourists and Christians come to this country? A lot. Hundreds of thousands. But do you know how many of them are really concerned or have been, uh, uh, you know, meeting Christians from this country have been important to them? Very few. You know, so you have done something beyond the local tourists or the tourists what they do. You have done what I call visiting the real stones of this country, the living stones. Because you can see a lot of churches, a lot of museums, a lot of things, and visit all of these stones. But it is something else to connect with the living stones of this country. And I want to thank you, really thank you. Thank you so much for doing so. And uh, we want you, one of my main reasons, you know, I, I act as a guide and share a little bit, but one of my main reasons for you is to pray for us. I know that, you know, Churches in the West, not many of them know that even there's something called Christian Palestine. I don't know if you all know, but did any of you didn't know that there's something called Christian Palestinian? Or you all knew? It's yeah. the wrong group to ask. No. Yeah, that's right. It's not, it's not a mistake or sin because you just don't know. You don't have information. You know, uh, unless you have a tour like this that bring you over to, to, to know and, and, and go deeper to think that there is something called Palestinian, Arab, Christian, who's living in here. We have Brother Andrew. Yes. And he writes books, so we know about the... He told us. He told us. Alex? Most of the people are, are ministers. Here. Yes, yes, but if you are not a minister, and if you're just a Christian, I mean, I go a lot of times to the West. And I, I would say maybe in Europe, in Europe, in Europe, people are more informed. I would say because you're more internationally kind of here. But if you are from the USA or Canada or somewhere, I mean, just if if I say the word, for example, you know, I ask a question: Have you? Uh, what's the first thought that comes to your mind when you think of the word Palestinian? And you know, the right right away you think of either terrorist, Islamist, Hamas, jihadist, etc. All the words that are used usually in a negative connotation. They never think that a Palestinian could come even preach at them, you know, the gospel. You know, it doesn't, doesn't connect, it doesn't make sense. And because of that, there's a lot of ignorance for what is going on in here, or about the church, the existing church that is in here. 
And that, as, at the same time, puts us in a, in a hard place as a Palestinian Christian because it isolates us. And, and come on, you know, most of the Christians are not from Holland. You know, most of the influential Christians, a lot of them, those that are on the TVs and talking loud and things, are from, you know, America, North America, and other, and England. And, uh, you know, the church here has been felt isolated for a long time because, you know, we don't want to change their viewpoint if theologically we're different. We just want them to know that we exist and we want to serve God in this area and want to thrive and want to build this church and want to build this kingdom. Uh, whether they knew about us or not, we exist. But it's better and much better that the body of Christ holds us and connects with us and holds hands with us so that we could also do our ministry in a better way. Right? And you correct me if I say something wrong. So that, that's why I say we want you to pray for us. Pray for a ministry like the Bethlehem Bible College that is thriving. God has blessed us. I mean, I cannot say, but thank God for everything, every miracle. I mean, I think what, last Saturday at the inauguration of this building, when our current president, Dr. Bashar Awad, wanted even to start a Bible school, you know, he, he had in his heart one of the main issues that really moved him. A lot of, uh, lot of pastors or leaders wanted to be trained to serve the church. But you know the the place that they would go to be trained to was the West, and you know when when they go to the West, you know what happens to them? They never come back. They stay there. There's more opportunities there. So his heart was really a burden with this vision. We want to train local leaders so that they could serve the local church and stay with the local church and expand the local church. And when he uh, came to a group of pastors, there were less than you, maybe ten of them. And he goes to them and say, you know, God had laid on my heart that all of us should start a Bible college. So one of them was so excited. I said, yes, we want to start a Bible college. And he comes with a check and gives him a check of $20 and tells him, start a Bible college. Can you start a Bible college with $20? With God, you could. I mean, it's proof that you could. Maybe that $20 was not used. But it's always, we have a God of miracles who use small things, small beginnings, small initiatives, and he expands it. And this is what you see here. I mean, uh, at the time when uh, Dr. Bishara came to the, the owners of that building that we came through, and he asked them, we want to use the place, they said, no, you cannot rent it, you have to buy it. And you have only five years to get the money and pay it to us. It was $1.8 million. Where can you get the money like that in, in, the, in the early 80s? But within five years, the money was there. And God was faithful. God was faithful. The same thing with building the other building. And the same thing with this. I mean, just to think of a project like this, you know, every step that you see here is really, of course, we're not there yet. We want to be used more and more for its potential. But if you have 170 students, 180 students, and you want to use this place to its potential and grow even more so that we're not only rich, because our heart is not only to serve only pastors and a group of leaders. They are very important, but we also want to go beyond to serve the whole community. Outreach to Christians and Muslims and uh, equip the people and change the mind of people. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, we, we know that we don't operate on only, you know, bringing, opening the Bible and, and just preaching at the people. There's a lot of other things that the society needs. And if we, of course, we call Bible College, but at the same time, we are, as an institution, are used to change the world view of people. How look, you know, if you are Palestinian, uh, whether Muslim or Christian, and you grew up in a more of a hopeless situation. I mean, you need a lot of thing, a lot of work on your life to be changed. Because if you are hopeless, you will do anything. Immigration is the easiest thing to do, but a lot of people go and kill themselves. You know, bomb themselves. Because I can't justify that, of course, but it is like when you think of their just mindset, where they are coming from, they're locked and, and it is this hopeless uh, 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 and vicious cycle of violence that, you know, going on and on and on, people are just bored of this and they want change. And we hope that we could bring change through, for example, that's why we training media, you know, uh, two years in media, two years in tourism, just to bring life for the people and at the same time equip them with something beyond the norm. And God had blessed this word. And that's why, you know, I could, I could, uh, you could rejoice with us. At the same time, pray with us that the Lord would continue to supply. Because although we, God had blessed us, on a yearly basis, there's a lot of needs. So I, I hope after you leave us, maybe some of your churches want to adopt 
uh, a scholarship for one of our students. I don't know. Maybe that's one thing, one little practical thing you could do for us. You know, we have students that, you know, if I tell you what they pay compared to what the real cost is, it's pennies. You know, they, they, they come and we, we get them to pay. They pay 1,500 shekels or $1,500, but the real